Yes, I am Narmani, I am a social teacher, I am a student of KGB University, I am a good university. Students, finish the breakfast. Yes, today is Chapati and Aadu Kari. Aadu is going to use the friends, how are you? Students, I am S. Narmani, KGB Vendurthi, Social Teacher, Kuntur District. Students, my district law, Pravin Chena, Kuntur Chena, Kuntur Chena, Yes, my district law, Krishna Hari, Pravin Chena.
Precipitation. water and its uses all the living things need water to survive to live and grow 
In this video, we are going to be looking at the various uses of water. We use water for drinking, cooking, bathing, washing clothes, cleaning, brushing teeth, washing utensils, washing hands, washing vehicles, and swimming. Apart from the domestic purpose, water is being used for farming and industrial purpose as well. Animals also need water to live. Plants need water to grow and survive. Water is a precious natural resource. We should not waste water. Saving water. Turn off the tap while brushing your teeth. Take shorter bath. Wash fruits and vegetables in a bowl of water. Turn off the tap after each use. Students, Jets, teachers. Slogans to the bring awareness on saving the water in consumption. And I have water in the water and save the water. But someone took on the slogans.
Sources of water Water is a precious natural resource. All living things need water for their survival to live and grow. Uses of water We use water for many things such as drinking, cooking, bathing, cleaning, washing, brushing our teeth and gardening. Water is also used for agricultural purpose and industrial purpose as well. Where does the water come from? Now we will learn about the sources of water. There are mainly three sources of water. Rainwater, groundwater and surface water. Rainwater Rain is the main source of water. It deposits most of the fresh water on the earth. Surface water It is the water that we see above the ground such as rivers, lakes, ponds, streams, sea and oceans. Surface water shall be consumed only after it has been properly filtered and disinfected. Groundwater During the rains, some water seeps into the ground which is called underground water. It's the water present beneath the earth's surface. Groundwater can be consumed using wells, tube wells and hand pumps. Water from all these sources reach our house through a tap. Indian rivers and water resources. So the Indian drainage system in India has evolved and adjusted itself with the evolution of three physiographic units. The three physiographic units are Himalayas, the Indo-Gangetic Plains and third one Peninsular Plateau. These are the physiographic units of India and based on its origin means reverse origin the drainage system was divided into two categories. They are the Himalayan rivers and the Peninsular rivers. The Himalayan rivers are perennial rivers because the supply of melting of snow and as well as rainfall. So the Himalayan system was divided into three river systems. The first one Indus river system. So Indus river system, the Indus originates from Manas Sarovar. In the Kailash ranges we found that Manas Sarovar. The lake Manas Sarovar it was follows northwesterly course through the Tibet. So from the Manas Sarovar it has 
originated and it have five tributaries the first one jhelum and second chenab third ravi and fourth one satluj and fifth one is base river so these five rivers on the name of these rivers only the landmass was named as punjab and the indus river was found that much plain lands in the pakistan region and in india especially in haryana and punjab in the himalayan region the second river system called ganga river system ganga river is the longest river in india and ganga river has a twin sources the twin sources are from one is satopant glacier and second one gangotri glacier so from gangotri glacier that bagirathi river and satopant glacier it originates at sato alaknanda so these two rivers join at devaprayag and form one bigger stream called ganga and ganga have some what tributaries which are important of north south flowing river which originated in the north gagar gandak and kosi and yamuna also it was originated in the north but flows towards the south and joined in the ganga near alhabad and which are originated in the south and which flowing to the north or chambal betwa are tributaries of yamuna and son river is tributary of ganga before entering into the bangladesh the ganga river split into two one stream is towards the bay of bengal through the kolkata region the stream named as hugli river the ganga river after entering into the bangladesh it named as padma river the third river system called brahmaputra river system so the brahmaputra river rises from the snout of the chamyangdang glacier of kailash range near manas sarovar so it flows eastwards through the southern tibet the river flows continuously towards the east and after taking hairpin bend it enters into the arunachal pradesh in arunachal pradesh it named as siang and dihang in assam region it is called as brahmaputra river after entering of bangladesh it named as jamuna river and brahmaputra river have two tributaries called lohit and dibang river and it forming that some of the plain regions in bangladesh and eastern states of india now the peninsula rivers of india the peninsula river system in this peninsula river system the maximum rivers are flowing towards the east because the dakkan plateau is slope towards the east direction so in the largest river of peninsula system is godavari which originated in the western ghats in the same krishna river also originated in the western ghats and flow towards the east and it has one tributary main tributary called tungabhadra and in tamil nadu region one more river called kaveri in the odisha state called mahanadi river it is also empties in the bay of bengal the flowing towards the east direction and in this peninsula rivers few rivers are flowing towards the west direction which originates in the vindhya and satpura ranges and they flow towards the west direction and drains into the arabian sea those rivers which originated in the vindhya ranges and satpura ranges and they flow to the rift valley and finally they join in the arabian sea and they flow westwards and two more rivers also there they were flows towards the south and joins in the arabian sea called sabarmati and mahi rivers surface flow and ground water flow so after the rainfall you can see the surface flow of water means water flow through through the streams and which joins into the bigger streams with this surface flow some of the water will percolates into the ground so the percolated water it will be filled in the aquifers you know already about the aquifers so between the large rocks the gaps only called as aquifer so in this aquifer water will be filled and that water only will use as the ground water with the tubules and how the surface flow of water the same way the ground water also the flow will be there the flow is appear in the rivers and tanks water for agriculture so to cultivate the land we will take the water from ground water especially our peninsula region we will depend on the tube wells in peninsula region we have the less rainfall that's why we will depend on tube wells so maximum farmers who belongs to the peninsula region or plateau region they'll take these bore wells or tube wells and some regions now nowadays they are implementing drip irrigation system because the less availability of water they are following some new techniques in the agriculture field
water used for domestic purpose and for animals. So in our daily life we will use the water for cooking, washing, cleaning and for animals is common nowadays. And here showing the picture called the percentage we are using the water for daily life. Water for industrial use. Water is required for manufacturing processes and this demand often competes with the domestic and agriculture uses because factories and industries require more water in the production process. Inflow and outflow. For example, a tank is being filled by inlet pipe means which recharging the tank or stream that is called inflow. Which water is empty means constantly used by the water with the outlet pipe or which is releasing of water from the dam. If you take example of dam, the dam water is releasing continuous means that is outflow. So which water is used that outflow which is recharging that is inflow. Which is already available is in a storage that is called stock. Tungabhadra River Basin Tungabhadra is shared by three southern states called Karnataka, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. It is a tributary of Krishna River system. And this river originates in the Western Ghats with a catchment area of 71,417 km2. Among these, which of 57,671 km2 is in Karnataka. Tungabhadra River Basin has two parts. It is upper and middle catchment area in Karnataka. The lower portion of the catchment in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. According to the official statistics, the farmland is the main land cover in these states. Others such as trees, groves, fallow land, cultivatable waste and permanent pastures, forest and natural vegetation cover the rest of the area. Tungabhadra Dam when it was constructed, it is capacity of storage is 3766 million cubic meters. But over the 50 years, it lost 849 million cubic meters of storage capacity because of certain reasons. The reasons are it was accumulation of silt due to the mining, dust, soil erosion and debris. And also one study means one survey says that a proper mining standards are not followed in iron ore extraction, especially the mining of iron ore at Kandremuk and manganese in the Sandur. These two minings are affected seriously.
వాటర్ కన్ఫ్లిక్స్ ద కన్ఫ్లిక్స్ బిట్వీన్ కర్ణాటక తెలంగాణ అండ్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ ఆర్ జనరలీ రిలేటెడ్ టు అవైలబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ ఫర్ యూస్ వాటర్ ఈజ్ ఎ ఫ్లో రిసోర్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ స్టోరేజ్ ఆర్ యూస్ అప్ స్ట్రీమ్ ఎఫెక్ట్స్ వాట్ ఈజ్ అవైలబుల్ టు పీపుల్ డౌన్ స్ట్రీమ్ సో వాటర్ ఈజ్ షేర్డ్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ అగ్రిమెంట్స్ బిట్వీన్ ద స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్స్ ద ఇంటర్ స్టేట్ డిస్ప్యూట్స్ ఆర్ కామన్ బిట్వీన్ కర్ణాటక అండ్ కంబైన్డ్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ అరైజ్ డ్యూ టు ద ట్రాన్స్ బౌండరీ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ ద రివర్ The industrial activities have caused pollution nearby the Tungabhadra River. Especially there are 27 functioning large units and 2,543 small units in this river basin. The industries were permitted to discharge effluents, means the waste water into the river. The laws also enacted for this, but these laws are not implemented forcefully. Hence, severe pollution of the river system continues.